as you uh, as you know, as you've seen around you, uh, the use of building information models for design and pre-construction activities is pretty well on the way to becoming a standard in the, in our industry. And case in point there is these images of um, our new office in uh, in Westminster, Colorado, uh, which was designed and, and built using uh, a variety of our own uh, Trimble BIM tools. Also, uh, regular attendees of the the Fridays with uh, Trimble know what, that there is more than, uh, in quotation marks, uh, just the design documentation uh, that you can extract from these building information models. Uh, there's a lot of power enclosed in these models. You can use it for quantity calculations, uh, quantity extraction, uh, which can then drive uh, the, the cost plans as well as the schedule plans. Uh, that really is the the new school of of doing things. However, uh, the uh, the reality is that uh, building an information model at this moment is uh, is not part of the contract documents. 2D drawings, typically sent as, as PDF files, are the contract documents and have to be checked for completeness and and uh, and correctness. And we see that as, as being a parallel effort to, to building your building information model. And this may introduce some risk to the project when the coordination work is done with 3D models. There is a significant number of, uh, of drawing sets that, uh, that are typically created throughout the design and pre-construction phases. Um, this example is actually shared by one of our customers, uh, uh, and, and in this example, each release uh, contained 480 architectural drawings. You continuously need to check whether there are any differences during pre-construction to make sure that your estimate and schedule uh, reflect the scope of the work that is uh, recorded in these drawings. And then during construction, if there is any updates that are being released, you need to make sure to quickly identify and track changes so that the cost and time are accounted for. Finding differences is not easy though. Um, I think everybody on the phone or on the, on the webinar recognizes this, this game. I'm sure everybody has played this at least once or twice. Um, puzzle books contain these kinds of challenges. Having two images side by side and they tell you there are five differences, find them. So what you do is your eyes move from left to right, left to right, left to right, focus on a certain area and try to identify an area where you think there is going to be changes and try to find that same area on the right side. Very difficult to do. Now, it becomes a lot easier if you would put those two images on top of each other and then toggle between the two. All of a sudden, you start to see where those differences are. I'll do that a couple of times to give you some time to uh, to identify the changes as well. Uh, I was quickly able to figure out a number or to find a number of changes already, and um, that that makes it so much easier to to find the differences. So not having to go from left to right to uh, to find the differences, but really putting it on top, putting those those images on top of each other. But I think that uh, that many people do the same thing with. Uh, printouts of drawings. Um, you see it often that, uh, that people are standing by the window holding up uh, two drawings uh, using sunlight to, uh, to reveal where the differences are. Uh, or of course the, uh, the, the light table using a, a, a similar approach. But what if you could do that in your computer? Uh, what if you could have your digital drawings, your, uh, your PDFs, and put them, stack them uh, in your computer and, and reveal and, and hide uh, the newest version so that you can get to that effect that I was just illustrating using the, uh, the two pictures. Would that make the comparison of, of drawing sets a, a lot easier? And what if you could combine that even in the, in the 3D space? Um, would that not make the world or bring the world of contract documents uh, a lot closer to the world of building information models? Well, here's the good news. That's exactly what we built. Uh, so today we will demonstrate how Document Controller will help your project team spot differences and, and check drawing versions 
um, overlaid if, um, if desired in 3D models in an unprecedented way. The document controller is a place where you can store your contract documents with your project. Uh, you see the, uh, the document register on the left hand side with the set of drawings and Duane will talk about how you use that in a moment. You can also do 3D model comparison. Uh, so if you do receive versions of models from uh, architects and engineers, you can bring those in as well and quickly reveal where the differences are using the same overlaying technique as well. And then you can also uh, overlay the, the 2D information within the 3D space and using that becomes a really powerful way to compare your contract documents to the model in which the coordination took place. So it's really a tool to perform all your change man management work in an integrated way. We built this tool for design managers, document managers, uh, BIM coordinators, uh, field engineers who all have the same goal, which is to reduce the risk by finding changes early. Now, as mentioned before, at the end of the day, the drawings are the contract documents, not the model. And document controller closes that gap. The model provides a great value for, uh, for quick and, and model-based estimating scheduling and, and layout, but we need to make sure, uh, and I refer to that as the, the new school of doing things, we need to make sure that it is in sync with the, with the contract drawings. And document controller, again, closes that gap. And of course, change management is a, is a pain. It's, it's, sometimes frustrating and time consuming to find out what was changed going from version 1 to version, tool, uh, version 2. And this tool makes it quick and painless uh, to find and communicate the 2D and 3D uh, changes and to share that with the entire team.